You are looking live at the student body here at John Marshall Mid High. This is a special edition of Thunder Insider in front of our live audience, and we're going to get started right now. <laughs> edition of Thunder Insider. As we mentioned, we are on location this week here at John Marshall Mid High with a great live audience. Thank you guys for having us. This is such a special treat for us to do something a little bit different. We're gonna be taking questions from the crowd out here. Obviously, I'm joined by Brian Davis, our play-by-play -play man, Matt Pinter, a voice of the Thunder on the radio, and Grant Long, our color analyst, who are going to be answering maybe some in-depth basketball questions. I'm not really sure what we're gonna to get today, so uh, be ready. We're all about ad-libbing. Okay, good, good. That's what we're gonna need. And Nick Gallo from thunder.mba.com is going to be our moderator out in the crowd right now. Nick, I'll let you take it away. Leslie, I've got Edward here. He's a power forward and center for the uh, basketball team here at John Marshall. Tell us a little bit about your team. Uh, hope we're going to be good this year, you know, win the state title. What's your question for the uh, panel here? Uh, what do the Thunder have to do to win a championship? What do the Thunder need to do to win a championship? Well, we all know that year after year they hope to be contending for a championship, and so far they've had a lot of success, Speedy. You want to First that? of all, I've got to give it up to Edward because he knows that Coach Campbell is lurking in the wings somewhere. So, you know, <laughs> he better be talking about a state championship. I think as far as the Thunder is concerned, now that it's in that zone where it's considered a contender and is a contender year after year, uh, I love the game plan. And what it really comes down to, Edward, is this. Uh, you know, you're a dozen or so games into the season. You don't want to be at your very best right now. You want to continue to build your chemistry, build your skills, continue to work in your performance at both ends of the floor and be at your peak game 82 of the regular season going into the playoffs and after that you should have the rhythm and the momentum that would carry you through. Can I be a smart aleck here? Sure. Win 16 playoff games. <laughs> that's what it's going to take to win a championship. It's as simple as that. <laughs> yes, that's simple. Grant, I mean you've played in the league for a long time. You know what it takes to or how hard it is to even get there. What do you want to add on this? I think it's about preparation. You have to prepare yourself for success, and I think that's what the group is doing, the Oklahoma City Thunder. They're preparing themselves for success, and what I mean by that is taking every game, every practice, and going as hard as you can, trying to get better with each game. And I think one of the most key ingredients that sometimes gets overlooked is that you have to stay healthy, and I think that's going to be a key ingredient for the Thunder, stay healthy. All right, let's move on to our next question with Malik and uh, you have a basketball team you guys are having practices so far how are they going uh, they're going pretty well but we got some work to do all right well what's your question for the panel here uh, how does Kevin Durant become such a consistent store well, that's a million dollar question I think everybody in the league would like to know that defenders are still trying to figure it out Grant I mean you played how hard is it to become as consistent as Kevin is night in night out I know it gets old, but you have to continue to practice every day. You have to practice on what you're good at. Kevin Durant is one of those guys, I believe, when he steps across the half court line, you have to start defending him because he has started to put in that work to be one of the best offensive players in the NBA. Secondly, I think you have to be able to not just score the ball traditional in a traditional way. That means you're taking a lot of jump shots. Kevin Durant has found a way to create offense from the free throw line. That's going that, that's helped him out a tremendous uh, amount. Nate McMillan, who used to coach the Portland Trailblazers, had the best comment I've ever heard about Durant, and that was from the time he steps on the floor, he's open. He's seven feet. He can shoot over the top of any defender, and because he can handle the ball now and crosses over on defenders stepping away from them, off the dribble he generates, as Grant said, a ton of offense efficiently, really efficiently. I think the other thing, too, you consider the fact that Kevin has worked very hard to become an unselfish teammate. Well, he starts dishing out the dimes and piling up the assists, and all of a sudden it's not going to be just the KD show. Uh, opponents are going to have to worry about his teammates, and there are going to be times then that that's going to make Kevin even more open for the shots that he has become so almost automatic at knocking down. Let me, let me add to that too, Leslie. When you take good 
good shots, you have a better opportunity to make those shots. Very rarely do you see Kevin Durant take bad shots in the offense. So again, when you take good shots, you have an opportunity or a better opportunity, I think, at making those shots and becoming consistent. And something that Coach Brooks knows and everybody on his team knows is it doesn't matter where Kevin is on the floor, he can make it from anywhere he is on the floor. And the other thing is he's talented. He's very gifted, talented, and he puts in a lot of hard work. Let's get one more question before we go to break. Leslie, I got Kiatra here. She has a question for that tall guy you got sitting over there with you. That, that Grant, I heard you play basketball. Were you any good? <laughs> were you any Grant, good? Were you any were good? You? That's a really good question. <laughs> That's a great question. It's still open to interpretation. <laughs> <laughs> but if you ask me like you are, I would say I was very good. I missed the All-Star team by one vote for 15 years. <laughs> Every year I was one short of making the All-Star team. That, that vote was a considerable vote a lot of years, but one vote, right? <laughs> Seriously, Grant followed the great George Gervin at Eastern Michigan, and Grant has got his number retired at Eastern, which is a pretty good school in the Mid-American Conference. It went on to play 15 years in the NBA, was an original member of the Miami Heat. If you look at their record book, uh, he is still in that record book in a number of categories, including disqualifications by fouls, but we won't talk about that. No, but the bottom line is that he wound up fashioning a great career in the NBA as a second-round draft pick, and that is not easy to do. And, so and here's the other thing he did. For interpretation. <laughs> the other thing he did is he rocked the goggles, so he made the goggles popular, which certainly we give him correct. the thumbs up for. That Absolutely. I think that was the best question of this first segment. All right, we have much more coming up on Thunder Insider. We'll continue to get questions for our panel here and the guys, and we'll also continue to break down the Thunder's recent play. So stick around. Much more coming up of the special edition of Thunder Insider from John Marshall Mid-High. <laughs>